Welcome everyone to another episode of She Has Something to Say. I'm very, very honored today. I get to have a colleague, a peer, a friend, and someone who I just think the world of with us today. We have Viviana with us. And Viviana, I'm not even going to attempt to try to pronounce your last name right. I know I won't get it right, but let me talk about you a little bit before we get your full name. Viviana is an entrepreneur from head to toe, and she is a brilliant, and I may say that again, a brilliant international executive coach. She is a Marshall Goldsmith Stakeholder Center coach, and her and I share that whole world together, as well as my business partner, Lynn Whitesell. We all actually went through our certifications and, and a lot of training together. So we come to this with a, a great passion. And then she also is a co-founder of an organization and it is OCEA and it's about women's leadership specifically. We're gonna talk some about that today. What's very interesting about Viviana, and we're going to talk about it, she speaks three languages, and she has a background of software, geomechanics, telecommunications, reservoir, and field engineering with her both her undergraduate and MBA in engineering as well. And I think what's really exciting is that she truly is an international human. She has worked all over the world and she is originally from Costa Rica and she is now currently living in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So welcome Viviana and make sure you give us your full name dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Lori. It's so great to see you and to get your energy and your kind words. Thank you for introducing me so beautifully. It's my pleasure and my joy to be here with you. And uh, well, my last name is Toralba, actually Viviana Toralba, and definitely not many people get it right. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to be vulnerable up front and just say, you know what, I'm just going to let her pronounce it for us rather than not pronounce it correctly. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for that. So yes, uh, it's a joy being here and sharing with so many women our experiences in a way that we can contribute so that they can get inspired and they can get leverage to go and achieve whatever they want to achieve. So I'm all yours. You can ask me anything and I'll give my best to everybody that's here watching us, honoring us with their presence. Oh, wow. Well, I know you, so I know your highest and best is always present and I love it. I want to talk first and foremost about what, what you currently do now. So I want you to share with people a little bit more about who you are from your perspective, from your heart. Just talk to us from your heart about who you are and where you come from and why, why you are doing what you're doing. Perfect. All right. So I would describe myself as a dreamer and as a person that always believes that there is a way. If, if, it, if it, nobody has invented it, we can make a way to make things happen. So this trait of mine has took me, as you, as you were mentioning, to many places as I developed my career, right? So I came from Costa Rica to Brazil 16 years ago to do my master's in engineering. And there I started my career in corporations, in multinationals, in the oil industry, right? So at that point, I, I gained a lot of experiences. I was very blessed to work with people from all around the world, of the, so many different cultures, as you can imagine. And uh, the truth is that the experiences gained along the field go way more beyond the technical. It's, it's all about people, right? right. Um, I, I also got the chance to work in, in rigs, in oil rigs. Uh -huh. in, something that kind can be very challenging for women especially because many of them they don't have infrastructure so I have I collected some interesting stories that helped me and got me to today to build this program for women for example because as it's no it's no secret that we don't have enough women in top positions in organizations right and the truth is that we need 
we need to create solutions with feminine perspective that serve the whole humanity. This is not about gender. It's just about having the best of everybody and putting it together to serve the humanity. So um, that was an experience that got me to create this program, Women to Leadership, which we, where I help women to get to leadership roles, actually, to, to decide and to shape the world we live in. So talk That's a little bit about your international executive coaching and, and how you help people. Like You're talking to me about this, but I want you to know you got millions out there listening to you right now. So talk about how you change behaviors and how you help individuals honor that and be able to work through that so that they can become their highest and best self. Of course, of course. Well, basically when we are dealing with problems or with people, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a leader in an organization, it applies to everybody. What gets in our way are behaviors. It's not ability, it's not technical skills. It is our behaviors. So how do I help leaders and business owners to change that? Well, first of all, we get to touch vulnerable points and understand, hey, what is on your control? What are you doing that is causing this situation or this result? And when we start digging in, we realize that they're just practicing some behaviors that hinder them from getting to the next level, right? So we can find out through many different ways, right? The stakeholder-centered coaching uses 360 feedbacks yes. so that the people that work with the leader can give feedback and tell, hey, this is the behavior you need to adjust to be even better. But also we can check within the leader. That's another uh, way I use to help them to tap into their greatest potential and to really understand how is it that they operate better so that they can be more fulfilled, more secure about how they are and how they lead people and shift it to have better lives. That's basically what I do with them. Mm -hmm. And I love it because that's what my organization does. We maximize that leadership, right? And I love that we're, we're probably 3,000 miles away. We share a kinship and we share this passion to really help serve others to become better, to become better at who they are and what they do and the impact that they make. And, and this discussion too today is about finding out more about how you make those positive lasting impacts in lives all over the world because not only do you do what you do right there in Brazil, but you've got, you've got a reach now that goes global. And, and I know that you're doing amazing things with your programming, but, but you also are highly invested with your energy and with your passion, with fashion and also retail products as well. So you're incredibly diverse in your, your portfolio of who you are and what you do. So talk about how you got to that and what those things are and how they're, how they're reaching out. All right, sure. So for me, whenever there's a need and I don't have the reach to it, I, I think about creating that, right? Yeah. So first, uh, the, the first uh, company that I founded together with my husband was about uh, fashionable travel items. So my, my mother-in-law, she's a fashion designer. And we came up with these designs to protect the suitcase because I traveled so much for work and my suitcases were always destroyed. Uh -huh. So I thought, well, how about combining fashion, expressing yourself, protecting your suitcase, making something practical. So that was the first business I, I uh, created. And then the second one was about its drinks. So we thought about bringing an experience to Brazil from Europe because here is such a sunny weather. Uh, people like to chill out on the beach and this option would come so amazing for people to experience the Mediterranean sun here in Brazil. So the reason why I get into this project is because in the end, no matter what you're creating, the point is you're contributing to something great, right? For people. Yes. And that's what really drives me. And also what drives me is to think about the strategies, which at the end of the day have to do with behaviors to deal with the people that, that help you get the product out there. And um, that, that's the reason why I, I, I go <laughs> diversifying in all these areas, right? 
It's amazing to me. I mean, we all do that, this, but it's amazing to me that um, they're so different from one another, but yet they have that common thread that, that drives you, that motivates you. So talk about your motivations and talk about how where you're from has really been a, a big part of those motivations to bring you where you are today. Of course. I would say that something that really, really drives me is feeling joy or being fulfilled in whatever I do. Uh -huh. For me, if I'm not having fun, it's not worth spending my time. It's, it may sound kind of radical, but the truth is that life is too short. And yes, I want to pick. I want to choose where I invest my life. And I believe that comes a little bit from Costa Rica, because if you have heard <laughs> uh, previously, Costa Rica is usually in the top ranking of happy countries. Yes. Right? And, yes. and it's something that we do have in our culture. It's very important for us. And I believe personally that you can be successful only if you're enjoying what you're doing right so my motivation is just have fun if i have the desire to do it go for it make it happen so what's interesting too is i want you to speak to this you went and you've got two engineering degrees and background in engineering and yet you're on the total opposite end in your career now with products and with coaching individuals and lifting their lives up. So talk about the thread. What is it in engineering? And part of it is that creativity that you're talking about. But what about engineering? Because in a younger, in a younger life, that, it drove you to go do that and get those degrees. And, and those, that specialty and, and that profession is very practical it's very logical it's <laughs> you know it's very driven and and it's bound by regu regulation and yet you found a way to pull the best of it and create so talk about that because that's pretty amazing <laughs> i'm glad that you brought this out because this can help many people yes so, so the reason why i studied engineering was because i was very good in math and I love math. And at 17 years old, you pretty much don't know much about how life is gonna look like, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I love math, I love creating, engineering must be the one. And I did study and I went through all that path, all these years working as a, in engineering fields, right? As you said, in reservoir, in geomechanics, civil, a bunch of, of, of specialties in the engineering. And I realized, hey, it's amazing, but you know what? This is not my thing. Right. <laughs> my thing. Clearly, it wasn't my thing. Where I excelled most at work was whenever I had to present or help people or in projects work with teams. So that's when I decided, hey, I'm feeling something. I need to listen to my gut and I need to take the courage and make the move. Mm. So, yeah, I started thinking what, what made me happy? What, what makes me um, you know, tick, what makes my heart really pound and what makes me feel motivated to, to, to do or contribute more to the world. And this is where answering these questions, I came to all these things that I do now. And I'm super happy. For me, it took years. I mean, I, I did undergraduate, then master's, and then worked all these years. Imagine, it, it was a long ride, right? <laughs> what I believed in the past and what, hold me back, what held me back was, hey, you studied engineering, you're making a very good salary, you have certainty, and how are you going to quit or leave this behind to go after some uh, feeling that you have or, or, or some desire that you have? <laughs> and this belief kept holding me back, right? Uh, until the, until one day the pain got so big ah. and I got leverage, right? Because I was not being happy and I started having pains all over my body. This is a long story that uh, maybe we don't have time, but right. I started feeling it. And I said, maybe this is the time to really step up, get the courage and make the change. Mm -hmm. And that is when I got my leverage to move forward. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. And it was the 
most important decision I made in my life. Beautiful. Were there other influences for you to help you? Did you have mentors or advisors? Did you, did you gain insight from anyone else or other things before you made your final decision? Mm -hmm. Great point. Yes. Usually the feedback that people gave me was, oh, you're so good helping people or you can see the big picture and you can ask questions that make us think. Yes. And uh, so that feedback, I really uh, digested it and thought about it. Right. And the other thing was that in the corporate world, you see that many leaders, they just, they just got to leadership positions because they were excellent technically, but they don't have any people skills nor the desire to help teams produce, right? They, 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 they have this hard time dealing with problems. And I saw that and I was like, it's amazing that people like this are in leadership roles and that this doesn't change. I need to make a change. So that was another leverage for me, seeing this type of situations and getting the feedback from the people around me as well. Good. And, and, and in that process, you are highly certified as, as a coach. And, and you do one thing I think that a lot of great coaches do, and that is continuous learning. Absolutely. Yes. And you were mentioning this word previously, you said discipline, right? And yes. continuous learning, discipline and continuous learning. Whenever we want to achieve something, this is a must. It's not non-negotiable. So it will take years. And one of the important things that we need to know as entrepreneurs and as coaches or anything in life is if we want to get somewhere, we need to put effort daily. It must be a routine. It must be a ritual followed every day. No matter if it's Saturday, if it's Sunday, you got to do the job. Right. And this is why it's important that you pick something that you like, because then it's not heavy. It's something that you enjoy and look forward to do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the information we have out there today is very vast, right? We have in Google, we find everything. We can have access like you and me, right? Miles away to fantastic people that can be our mentors <laughs> and that can help us move forward and be even better at what we are. So definitely it is a must that we need to have in mind. So share your thoughts around the power of having an executive coach. If you are a leader in an organization, share the power of that. What does it mean to have an executive coach and to work with an executive coach? Mm -hmm. Yes, the power of having an executive coach is that you have an ally there helping you to win. <laughs> right? It's simple as that because right. When you're in leadership position, sometimes it gets very lonely and nobody gives you honest feedback because you're the boss. Yes. Right? Yes. So you cannot see your blind spots and you may be incurring into several mistakes that can lead the business or your team to total failure and nobody's there raising the flag. So a coach will help you see those blind spots, mm -hmm. lift the flag for you and help you address the behavior or everything that is in your hands to make the shift and move forward. Mm -hmm. So for other others that are out there, and this conversation, by the way, is just dynamic and inspiring. How do you balance your family and your relationship with your husband and this company and the other companies? And, and then also you gift your time and energy in thought leadership to all kinds of efforts out there as well. So talk about how do you balance that? What's most important in that balance? Mm -hmm. To me, the most important thing is be clear on what is non-negotiable for me. So for me, my parents, which are in Costa Rica, are non-negotiable. I talk to them every day, no matter at what time I go to bed, my husband as well, and exercise a couple of days a week, not all of them because I cannot do everything, right? <laughs> Right. And some things you get to delegate to others and trust them, right? And just make peace that it may go wrong, but they will grow and you will grow too. And it is time. You're, giving, you're taking your time back, which is so precious when you delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is whatever you decide to take away from your plate to be healthy and in, in balance, make peace with that you're not going to suffer for whatever you decided not to take. Just make peace and know that the day has 24 hours. That is very powerful. Acceptance and making peace with that. Yeah. So 
took me a while, I tell you, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, because it's like you're losing something, right? And you're like, no, I want to do this and I want to do this. But in the end, it's just a practice of behavior. Making mm -hmm. peace with it is just setting, breathing and say, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. What is that? Life is good. <laughs> it's all good. It really is when we open our mind and allow abundance. It's powerful and amazing. Viviana, I really, I really want people to understand the impact of globalness in today's world. And I think this is something that you can bring to the table because we're all located somewhere in this beautiful planet Earth. And, but yet, interestingly, and lately, we're forced into redesigning and creating new ways to connect. And, and I think the internet plays a big role in that and some of the tools that we use. But even deeper than that, I want you to talk about the power of globalness in our lives today, and also as an entrepreneur in what we choose to do. Mm -hmm. Sure, so the power of glo glo having access to any person <laughs> in the world, uh -huh. this is just amazing, right? Uh -huh. uh, sometimes I hear clients limit themselves and saying, because I cannot do this, and I'm like, hey, are you thinking locally or globally? because the possibilities are infinite. If you have a product or if you have a need, you can just basically talk to anybody by LinkedIn, send them a message, uh, find a, somebody that knows them and ask them to introduce them to you, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the world is I, oh, our oyster, I like to say, because everything is at our reach, right? Mm -hmm. And to coach and work with our clients, basically is just having this warmth, you know, person to person it's not uh, computer computer just connect at a bigger level sometimes mm -hmm. sending a voice message to say hey how are you doing it's right. better than the text just keep that humanity even though right now we cannot do it because of, of covid or in globality because we're so far away but just make sure that you remember you're a human and the, and the, the other person is not a number it's a human as well it's a human absolutely and reading is really important to you and so talk about the discipline you have around reading and maybe some of your favorite authors that you read. Definitely. <laughs> well, I love reading, reading about everything indeed. I like reading about Ayurveda, which uh, tells us about what we eat and the energy. Um, I also like reading about yoga. And in leadership, I have a couple of great authors that I admire and that I love. So one is Simon Sinek. I yeah. love his books. Yes. Right. Marshall Goldsmith. Yes. Sam Helgeson. <laughs> Ken Blanchard. Tony yeah. Robbins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so all of these amazing masters. Richard Branson. I also lo love reading about Richard yes. Branson. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. So, mm -hmm. yeah, these are some. <laughs> I love it. And do you read daily? Do you do you block out time each day to read? In the past, I did. Right now, to be honest, I'm really busy with the launch of one product. Yes. So this month, I have been reading like two, three times a week to be very vulnerable with you. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I allow myself that flexibility because I noticed that when I was very rigid, it's good to put a schedule. But like I said before, right, sometimes you need to take something off your plate to bring something in. Mm -hmm. So there are times when I do that and it's okay. Okay, I'm going to ask it. What is the power of vulnerability? Why is it so important to be vulnerable? Of course. I believe when you're vulnerable, you get to connect to the deepest level with a human being. Yes. We're not tools, right? We're, we're people. We, we, everybody demands results. And at the end of the day, we're, we're a person, right? And vulnerability brings us, brings us back to humanity, I believe. Yeah. I always say it's the highest form of energy. Oh, that's beautiful. It is, and it's where we connect, right? It's the highest form of energy. It's where we emote. It's where the, high, the biggest brain that we have, this thing in our chest called the heart, it's where that thing just grasps it and it takes hold of it and it just blossoms it. And it's so powerful when, when we do become vulnerable, authentic, and truthful. 
And I think it gives us the highest level of credibility that we could have at that moment in time. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I love that you answered that though, because it gets right back to how we started the conversation as well talking about serving others and helping others to be, you know, to get to that place where they're enjoying what they do. Absolutely. Yes. So share with us, I'm, I really want to frame this right. Share with us one concept that you see consistent with leaders that you really want them to maybe just get, get the tip of the iceberg with and understand. Share with us one concept that could somebody could be watching this and really it it impact them and it give it moves mountains in them and gives them the opportunity to really think and and then be able to reach out. The first one that comes to my mind is <laughs> most of them are overachievers and they believe that they have to be moving all the time. Yeah. So this thing we were talking about having a rest, they see it sometimes as a waste of time. Right. Right. So one thing that has shifted many of the leaders I have worked with is, hey, give another meaning to the time you're using to rest. Say that you're recharging, not that you're wasting. Otherwise, you will not ever be able to really get that energy back to be at your best. And when they do that, they realize, hey, really, I needed this break. I needed to stop for a minute, listen, think. We cannot be always on motion. We need time to think, relax, breathe, and be humans at the end of the day. You speak three languages. So you are <laughs> translating constantly <laughs> in all different ways, more so than, than some, but and the majority of people, it's interesting because I'm finding more and more in this global environment, people do speak two or three, four languages, sometimes more. So the power of language, go further into that. Talk about that when it comes to seeing people rise and seeing people really change their behaviors. Mm -hmm. I think the, pow the power of language, the, the words we use create the world we feel, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, you know, I work with so many different people and I can see right when I, I can hear, let me correct the word. Whenever I hear some words, I can tell, hey, this leader is way beyond average. And when I hear some other words, I say, hey, this leader has trouble. For example, great leaders, you hear them speak and they're like, yeah, because here I'm looking for, I'm seeing an opportunity. Here I am seeing a space for growth. Just as simple as that. And there are others that they're always, this is a big problem. And this is, a, this is such a burden for me. And so you see that they're heavy, their energy is heavy. And the results are heavy as well because people cannot stand working around people that have a heavy energy. And this is something that I think we, it's our role as coaches to change this in society. It's so simple, but it's very, very impactful in results and in the quality of life. I'm going to take it to the next step because I just experienced something with you. So as you describe those two different approaches to language, your whole body language changed and I got into it. I changed. I felt it. I actually went, whoa, I'm watching you and seeing that. So talk about the that language is more than just these words, what we think in these words. Talk about that whole aspect of how powerful language is when we adopt our environment and when we're really present and attentive we this beautiful body that we all have is an instrument that we use very little right yes <laughs> we use very little so our face our body our words our pitch our tone of voice they all send energy and messages to yeah. people yeah so if you, if you listen to somebody speaking like this with calm and so, it's different than if you hear me, right? You, you get the feeling. It's a different energy. And right. the different energies produce different results. Yes. Right? Yes. So we got to be very aware of how are we communicating, not only with our words, but with the, the, the way we use our body with others and even with ourselves. So what's the last bit of communication that you want to share out there with the world? Ooh. 
what I want to share with the world, well, I would say that remember, l- let me think so many things. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, Lori, you got me. I would say do not keep your greatness to yourself. Oh. Allow yourself to get out of the mold. You don't have to be like everybody else. You're perfect the way you are. Just use whatever feels good and you will always be outstanding. Allow yourself to, to, to use it and abuse it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Viviana, how can people connect with you if they want to connect with you? Sure. The LinkedIn is the best way. I'm always there. So they yes. can send me a message. They can also send me an email at info at vivianatoralba.com. Well, maybe, maybe it will be written somewhere in the video. And also <laughs> through Instagram as well. Wonderful. Coach. So yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart as a colleague, as a friend, and also as the host of She Has Something to Say. Thank you so much. It's been a joy, Lori. Thank you very much.